Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're diving into this 1983 FJ60 that's been sitting in a storage unit forgotten for five, 10, let's just call it 15 years. I'm praying that there's nothing wrong with it. Nope, I'm sure there's plenty for me to do. So let's get started and dive in and take a little tour of what this truck is. You may be wondering why a truck that looks this decent has been sitting for so long. The gentleman that we got the truck from told us that the heater core had gone out many years ago and he went to replace it, which he successfully did. But he never put the interior back in and it's still stripped out. So the truck sat and it sat some more. Then he moved out west to Arizona and it sat some more until it came time that he reached out to us and he wanted to sell it. So we picked up the truck and while we were picking up the truck, he told us that this truck was owned by a doctor originally who had all the maintenance done by the Toyota dealership. So that gives me hope that there's not gonna be a whole lot of work to get this truck extremely roadworthy. In fact, we drove it two hours from where we picked it up to this point right here without any hiccups. So I already know it runs pretty good, but we wanna get it dialed in to making it look extremely beautiful and ready for its next owner. Like I said, this truck is in really nice shape, but there are still little things that we want to take care of to make sure it's up to the challenge of living on for several more years. Some things like the logo, Toyota logo is broken off. The engine has a little bit of an exhaust leak, so we're probably gonna have to do a manifold gasket. I want to polish out the paint. The big thing that needs to be taken care of is the interior. The entire interior has been bed linered, so we're gonna go ahead and put a new carpet, brown carpet in there as well. As you can see, the dash and all that stuff is still stripped out. We're gonna go ahead and put that all together. Then you have your center console that is broken. We're gonna have to replace that. All the little bits in here that are broken are gonna get replaced. You know, this clip here for the sun visor, we're gonna get that all replaced. As you can see, it's got these aftermarket seats that have been recovered. First glance, when I saw the pictures for the first time, I didn't quite like them, but they are very comfortable, so that's a huge plus. I don't believe that uh, the gentleman that bought this wants to go back to stock stuff. We do have the ability, I do have all that stuff in stock if he changes his mind. As you can see back here, all the bits and pieces from the interior are all here boxed up. Let's just hope that stuff isn't broken. Dash is destroyed. You can see it's all cracked. It's pretty normal for a 60 series, but I do have one that's in a little bit better shape. We're gonna replace it with. <clears throat> all the panels here are taken out. So we're gonna have to find something for that. As you can see, it's all just wrinkled and torn to hell there. The tailgate, that's pretty common on one of these trucks. It's just unfortunate. We may have to find another tailgate eventually. Toyota tag light. <clears throat> A little rusty and it does work so you know maybe we don't change it out still got to talk to the customer that owns the truck like the chrome were intact um, depending on the person that had bought it what they want to do and how deep they want to go with this truck we may go ahead and prep the frame like i typically typically do on one of these trucks just to prolong its life for many years to come but overall i think that she is in amazing shape Got a ton of work. We've already written a small baby list of all the things that need to be done. So let's dive in there and start getting started. Got a brand new battery in our... Here's the two dashes after a quick cleanup. The one on the front is the dash that I'm gonna be putting in the truck. I think she cleaned up fairly well. Probably can use a little bit more cleaning once it's in the truck. I don't wanna break it or crack it. This old one, as you can see, is just beat. I mean, it really went through the ringer. The dash is all back in place. I think it looks absolutely awesome. We do need to do a little bit more cleaning to just kind of get it to where I want it to be. But overall, it came together pretty smoothly and I think it looks really great. If you're wondering how I put this dash together and I know how to do it so quickly, I do have a video of completely taking the entire dash off 
and that link will be right here if you want to check out that video. Now that the dash is all reinstalled in the FJ60, I went home and ordered a whole bunch of stuff that I know the truck's going to need in the future. Stuff like a carpet kit, a manifold gasket because it's ticking when it's under acceleration, as well as a tune-up kit including spark plugs, wires, etc. So we'll get to that stuff at a later date. While we're waiting for that stuff to show up in the mail, I went to my personal parts room and grabbed a whole bunch of small things like bumper caps and dimmer switches because the dimmer switch is broken in the truck that we're going to go ahead and install to kind of get us started and ready for when all those other items show up. I believe I reviewed this in the past, but getting the grill off can somewhat be a little bit difficult. What I've just learned to do is, is you can loosen the bezels a little bit with the two front screws and pull them out of the way. It's not the best way to do it. You could potentially break one of your light bezels and then you're gonna have to track some old crusty part down. But that's the way I do it. Ideally, you wanna take both bezels off completely and then you can pop the grill out. So there are these little clips here. Um, you have to kind of squeeze them and push forward. They'll come out. There's also gonna be one screw right here that goes on the actual grill support, which is this guy right here. So then it will all kind of pull free. Getting it back in, it's just a simple push and then put that screw back in. So the reason I took this one off is we're gonna be replacing this Toyota emblem, which is three screws on the back. I have a really important one for you guys today. I noticed that the dash lights weren't working. Only some of them. Turn the key here, you can see that the charge light, the brake light, you pull the choke. Nothing here on the dash. Even when I turn the lights on, none of these gauges are working. So I've run into this problem before. Sometimes it can actually be a fuse, it's rare, or that the bulbs are all completely out. Uh, it's rare that I see that too. Usually what it is, it is a dimmer switch. So it's this guy right here. This being an earlier FJ60 from 1983, the dimmer switch is slightly different. This is from a later version. So we're gonna go and slap this in and see if it makes our difference. I'm gonna also walk you through how to get your dimmer switch out. It's pretty straightforward. For purposes, I've already kind of disassembled some of this. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your fuse cover off and then you have, you run into your fuse block here, attached by two 10 millimeter uh, bolts, which I've already gone ahead and taken out. You wanna slip this guy after those two bolts are out to give you enough room here, maybe like two fingers length, switch out. The switch is actually held on by a nut that is a 12 millimeter. So just use a deep socket and you should be able to get that off pretty straightforward. Once that's out, she will pull through the back of the dash and then she will come out. Let's get this one disconnected. Like I said, this is an earlier version. And that seems to be our issue. We're pulling the dash apart a little bit again. As I was putting it back together, I noticed that the AC controls light was completely burnt out. So I wanna take that apart real quick and get that all fixed and show you how to do it. So if your light isn't working behind here, it's pretty straightforward to get back there. You can kind of pull and push on this side and it will come away this little bezel here. Just be careful, you don't wanna break it. And then your light sits behind this little guy. 
I'm not sure if you can see that there, but that is completely all melted and burnt out. So we're gonna get that all replaced. I have a uh, fresh one from a parts truck that we're gonna throw in there that is all in working order. We just ordered a lot of stuff for this good old brown truck. She's kind of got a whole new lease on life. You may be asking, what did we order? Well, it's a lot of the typical, you know, stuff that these things need for, you know, like a little tune-up, some spark plugs, you know, things like this rear plate light, brand new, mind I tell you. Intake manifold Remflex gasket we're gonna be doing. Big box is a brand new brown carpet. Let me tell you, this thing is gonna be something special when it's... At first, somebody's gotta do all the work. I guess that's me. Shoot. Hey, I need help. As you saw, the interior of the FJ60 is really turning a page, especially with that new carpet kit all installed and the dash all back in place. We still have a few more things to take care of in the interior, but for now, we're gonna move into the 4.2 liter 2F engine bay. This truck doesn't run too bad. It actually is a very strong 2F, but we do wanna do some maintenance to keep it strong and moving forward for years to come. So we're gonna do some spark plugs, wires, an oil change, go ahead and do all the filters. And one of the big projects that we're gonna be doing is doing the manifold intake gasket because it does have a tick as it goes down the road, which is a sign that the gasket is bad. This fuel filter looks like it's been on the truck since it rolled off the factory. So I'm really, really glad that we're changing that out with a fresh one. We're gonna put this Wix in its place, which I think is much needed.
manifold gasket is finally off the FJ60. As you can see, we pushed the manifold over to the side. It gave you just enough room to scrape the side there to get the old gasket off and pull the old gasket out. This one was more of a pain in the butt. I usually pull the smog stuff off the trucks that I'm working on, but the customer I'm working for wants to keep all the smog stuff intact. So a little bit more difficult, and I'm pretty sure that this was the first time this gasket has probably ever been changed in the life of this vehicle. I'm um, just take a look at this gasket. She fell apart in two pieces. This black stuff, the sign that it was leaking exhaust, those spots. I mean, the whole thing is just beat to heck. We're all set to change out all the V-belts in the front of the motor. It is a good idea to do this just in case there's cracking or your belts are old or you don't know how old they are. They're pretty reasonably cheap and it's just a good maintenance thing to take care of. Make sure you don't throw your old belts out. It's a good thing to throw under the seat as a just in case if you ever end up on the side of the road and you need one. After a frustrating battle of putting a new manifold gasket on this truck, we finally got it back together. That number six bolt, it's tough and it will drive you crazy. But we got it all back together. The truck's got a little bit of a tune up, new belts, wires, plugs, rotor, and we're ready to turn the key and see what happens. So let's get her turned over, see if she'll start. Well, the interior is really starting to look great, but it's still missing two items from right in the center here. The original center console that came with this truck had a broken cup holder, which is pretty standard for those older center consoles. So I think it's time to do a little shopping. I just so happen to have not just one, but several of those older center consoles. So let's just take our pick. I think this one will do us justice. We're gonna get it a little cleaned up. We also need a brake boot for the emergency brake. We got one right here. It is not absolutely perfect, but it will work for our purposes. So let's get these two items all cleaned up and back in the truck. With the tailgate carpet looking absolutely amazing and ready to go back on the truck, there's a couple things that we need to know about installing it on the physical tailgate. One, that you have to have these little nubs that fit into the holes of the tailgate um, all the way around it. This tailgate did not have those in it, so we had to go and source those from a parts truck to get those all installed. Then we wanna go ahead with these male side that actually fit right into the carpet here. They're pretty plug and play. They fit right up in there, and those are what's gonna click right into place and keep it anchored down to the tailgate. The ride home in this thing was absolutely amazing. I really love driving stock 60 series. It's just one of those really cool things I get to do on a daily basis. We're gonna go ahead and wash this thing for the first time since it's been in my possession. And then we're gonna go ahead and polish out the paint. See if we can get that brown paint to pop again. As you see, a little bit of the clear coat is coming off, but I think that we can polish that out to make it shine again. So got this bumper back in shape in the front end of the 60 series the customer reached out to me and says he's got a little bit of a surprise for this old truck and he wants me to remove the stock bumper so that's what we're working on we're fighting with the carriage bolts and all the rusty hardware that holds it to the front of the end of this truck but we almost got it off and then I'll show you what he's giving us after a simple oil change we are getting ready for a spaghetti dinner. That's right, we were pulling off all these vacuum lines and all this smog equipment. It's gonna go to the trash. Unless you live in California and need the stuff, it's all working. Let me know in the comments below if you need it. We're gonna be doing the delete kit from Manafree, which is in the mail as we speak. But we gotta get all this stuff off to help her breathe a little better. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Jump right in there. 
Ahora. And we need a battery tray because this one is completely game over. If we don't take care of this issue now, it's going to cause further issues in the radiator support and front fender by causing some rust stuff to happen. So we're gonna get that all switched out. We just so happen to have a really decent used one here that we're gonna throw on there so that issue does not occur later down the road. Well, we finally got all the emission stuff pulled off. So a guy went inside, got on the interwebs and went to manafree.com and spent $300 and waited two days to get the desmog kit that Manafree makes. But that two days gave me just enough time to pull all the other stuff off and <laughs> actually polished the valve cover so much so that he really just can't even see what he's doing anymore. He's running after the D-Smog. It's running absolutely silky smooth. Eliminated all the exhaust leaks that the smog stuff was providing to the truck. Had to modify the poly here that would inflate the smog pump a little bit so it wouldn't rub on any of the belts. But other than that, it's running exactly the way it should. Got everything capped off and ready to take it on a drive. So we're gonna let it warm up here, burn off some of the penetrating oil that we had to use to get some of those things off the engine and then we'll be able to, able to ride it down the road. As you can see, the OEM front bumper is gone. It's history, <laughs> yesterday's news, you know what I mean? In preparation of something special, which just arrived today. So let me show you what that is real quick. This is an ARB first generation bumper for the 60 series, which was kindly gifted to this truck. And guess what? It's like a game show. There is more. This is an 8274 period correct winch for one of these 60 series that we're gonna be mounting onto this first generation ARB. Once the D smog was all finished, we took the truck up the road and it would drive really great at low RPM. Once it hit power band around 2000 RPM, it started to choke and cough like it was losing fuel. So I went ahead and replaced the igniter and coil. It started running a little better, but I just wasn't convinced. So when I looked down in the carburetor, it had a lot of dirt in it. So we blew the carburetor apart. And as we were blowing it apart, I noticed that the part that should be the float right there is completely missing. That's because, if you can see down in there, it is broken off in the actual fuel bowl of the carburetor. Which would explain why we were acting as if we weren't getting any fuel to the carburetor. So we're gonna get that all fixed up. I have a parts carburetor here with all the pieces that we need to make this one work exactly the way it should. Well, it's finally time to deliver the brown FJ60 back to my friend and customer. I feel like I've had this truck in my possession for entirely way too long, and it's time to get it back to its rightful owner. As you can see, I think that she's really turned out well since the days we saw her sitting in the storage unit, sitting at idle for many years. After polishing the paint, bringing that interior back around, and getting it desmog, this truck floats down the road like the classic that these trucks are slowly becoming. When we get to the customer's place and my friend's house, we're gonna be swapping out these old tires for some VFG 33 10.5 15s on some rims that I already went ahead and polished out because the white rims on here are a little too pitted for my liking. So that's gonna be one of the last modifications we do when we get to the customer's place. After that, he wants to put a suspension lift on this truck and eventually put a sniper EFI kit on it. That's gonna come later down the road 
that's going to be the conclusion of this episode. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe to the channel, like and share these videos as it really helps me stay motivated to keep on bringing these things out of storage and keeping them on the road. Cheers, and we'll see you on the next episode.